Hello again, folks, and welcome back to Let's Play Fatal Frame. I'm your Dungeon Master Darius. Last we left off, we had ourselves a very depressing realization from Miku. And, um, a revisit to an old location from the first game. Who, who remembers the Abyss? It's not a lovely place. Not a fun place Please, at all. You tell me, am I really supposed to be alive? Oh, we're Miku again. Not this dream again. I don't want it anymore. Now, I'm pretty sure most would probably say, man, she complains a lot for the, you know, being in these dreams or whatever. Can't blame her. It can't. These dreams suck. Alright, so as long as we have the, have the uh, candle, we shouldn't worry about a miasmic state. But at the same time, I probably shouldn't turn away uh, seeing the candle. Or you... Picking up the candles anymore, seeing as that fight with the arm lady particularly nasty because she was doing a lot of damage. I you once I got into the swing of things, it wasn't so bad. And who's the ghostly? Uh huh. There was a moment of a ghostliness here. Seems like it was right around here. Oh. There it is. In the mirror. Or not the mirror. The window. Did I just use the good film? Okay, no. Some of the film regenerates, some of the other ones don't. Okay, so... Based on what I saw, I did have to go into the rope palace. So here's hoping that this, this chapter is far more cut and dry. Yep. Well, really? Kendall's already going low. Er. Yeah, is this supposed to be Kyrie? Pretty sure it's supposed to be Kiri, guys. Ah! Heck. Oh, saw it off. Over... Where? Oh, behind me. Lovely. Yep, that's Kyrie. Okay. Really? Alright, sure, fine. I don't know, I guess it didn't click in my head that it was Kyrie for some reason. They really did. They... I don't know. The... Before, ghosts had patterns and whatnot that you could understand it. Now, they're pretty much... Oh, my thing is I teleport to behind you now. Ah. Why even Fatal Frame if they're just going to freaking back up into the walls? Oh, heck. 
Oh! That one didn't even make sense. Fuck you. Yes, I know I have an ability. Just trying not to use it really goddamn nilly because of crutches. Just do a move or something, please. I've got to go back. Go back and forget. Alright. Real talk here. It does suck that she is slowly more or less forgetting her brother, but my take is less that she is forgetting her brother and more moving on, not making it, you know, not making it so as something that is going to consume her, as it were. And that, I feel like, is far better of a situation? Reality to Ray. And, like, yeah, again, it does suck that she, you know, is forgetting, but there are other things in her life besides her brother. Like creepy arm things in the wall. There are other things to live for. That's my take anyways, but I I speak on that mostly as a dude with, you know, a grand law of depression trying to look on the better side of things. You know, trying to better myself as it were. Uh, that said, I'm running over here to save because I'm kind of intrigued. Alright. Hour 11. How many freaking hours are there? Seriously. Test save. Because I got a feeling I can leave the dream right now. And try to step back into reality. It won't open. Why? Excuse you? I, I thought that... Do I have to try to use another exit? I mean, there's plenty of other exits. That one is blue. Oh my lord. Do I seriously have to go through the entire manor to try to get to the other exit if I want to... 100% screw myself over with just trying to leave. Uh, Alright. One second, folks. I want to experiment. Oh, that's not creepy. No one will survive.
How long has it been? Ray, there might still be some hope. Miku has gone. Has she gone to the one she longs for, her brother? Is her decision the right one? And for me too? I mean, I'm not going to say that, that I was expecting a super happy, cheerful sort of a thing to happen, but at the same time, I don't know, I was really hoping. Still may be hope. This book was left inside an old shrine not far from the Manor of Sleep. It seems to date from the time when the house was known as the Kuze House, or the Engraving Shrine. It's not easy to read much of it now, but it has something to do with the Ceremony of Commandment. Oh yeah! Chosen, pass uh, chosen Maiden is put onto the boat of passing. The boat sways as it is sent to the Kuze Shrine. The living flesh is cut, the tattoos etched in. Pain of a holly of the holly shall be sealed within her. All her love shall be interred into a mirror. This she must break, shatter herself. Her attachments to this world must be broken. Piercing of the soul must con uh, thus concludes. Impale her with a stake of, ta stake of tattoos. The writ of commandment must be conducted. Sleeping undisturbed for eternity, dreaming the endless dream of the rift, enclosed, entombed in her chamber of thorns. She shall continue to feel the pain of the holly for all time. This is a book written by a scholar of folklore named Akito Kashiwagi about the sleeping priestess, but the same material appears in this book as well. Legend of Song. After extensive research on the Mutsu lullaby, the Sleeping Priestess lyrics were discovered that appear lyrics that were discovered that appear to be closer to the original. The following includes thoughts on how the song came about as well as its meaning. Sleep children lie in peace. If you cry, the boat you'll ride. The last trip to the other side. Once you get there, sacred marks you'll bear. They shall be peeled off should you fail to lie still. The words lie in peace in this version of the song seem to connote death rather than sleep. The words sacred marks may be related to the area's legend of the tattoo master. Perhaps in the original religious song, it, ex it's ex yeah, it expressed a meaning of engraving a tattoo. Sleep children lie in peace. If the priestess wakes from her dream, from her endless dream, perform the writ of stakes, her limbs pin tight, lest the doors open wide and suffering unleashed on all. After researching various oral traditions, there was found to remain here the vestiges of a spirit world faith of spending, sending the spirits of the dead to the sea, despite the fact that it is in the mountains. The sea may signify the underworld. If the doors are taken the doors to the other world, then lest the doors open wide and suffering unleashed on all, seems to connote that if the doors on the other world open, some disaster will occur. This song may have originally related to a ceremony that protected the 
escape to the other world. The combination of elements such as the title, Sleeping Priestess, the Priestess Waking, Sleep, and Laying to Sleep, juxtaposed with the word to pin, blends the meaning of the priestess being aided to sleep, in other words, to be put to sleep. A sacrificial property can thus be read into the song. Following is a diagram found in the original documents combined with the legend that seems to be based on the ceremony and religion. In the center of this illustration, there is a small shrine where engraving shrine is written. A part of the song about tattoo lends credence to the theory that the song may have been sung here. Deep in the engraving shrine, there is a vast sea, the underworld, and the shrine is drawn as a boundary between this shore and the other side. The lore accompanying the diagram is as, fo is as follows. Break fresh skin, engrave the holly, impale the tattoo stake, subdue for eternity to sleep in the rift. Like the song lyrics, the lore can also be read as having the same human sacrifice-like aspect of impale, subdue, and sleep. Both of the books indicated that the writ of commandment, or the writ of the stakes, by impaling the priestess with a tattoo stake, you subdue her for eternity. The doors could refer to the gates of hell, and now, for some reason, they have been opened. But if we can impale the priestess's limbs with the tattoo stakes, then we may be able to put her to rest. I think the tattoo stakes are some sort of special stakes. They must be somewhere in the manor. Impale the priestess. I remember you said that he had found a tape with the song recorded on it. Do you happen to hear anything about it? A tape. It may be in his room. I'll go take a look. Well, this is definitely going far more in a different direction than I was thinking it was going to go. I kind of thought that she was going to, I don't know, wake up and be all like, Yay! There's more to my life than feeling alone because my brother died. Which, I mean, I know I sound terrible for saying that, but god damn it. Uh, anthropology books. There's a notebook that says the manner of sleep in the drawer. Perhaps it could contain something useful. Urban legend. The manner of sleep is an urban legend that was whispered among those in psychiatry psychiatry about hospitalized patients suddenly disappearing. There are several stages to it, and it progresses like a sickness. Having the same dream, the patients, who later go missing, first see the same dream every day, usually about dead lovers or family. Dreaming of the manor. Next, the patients dream about wandering into a large manor, as huge, snowy, Japanese-style house. It is laid out haphazardly, say that again, as though many extensions were added. Then, deep in the manor, one discovers their dearly departed proceeding deeper into the manor. Patients follow the dead deeper into the manor. Most patients find the same scenes and phenomena along the way. For example, hearing a lullaby, seeing a masked funeral march, or being pursued by a tattooed woman. Hallucinations while awake. At this stage, the patient complains of abnormalities of the body while awake. Symptoms are common to all patients, and when they wake, they feel a sharp pain and see a growing blue bruise or a snake-like tattoo. Decrease in waking hours. At this stage, the patient's response to external simulation grows weaker. Time spent in sleep also slowly increases. From a medical viewpoint, this is a defensive reaction to pain, so if the patients are actually in pain, it is a normal response. Missing slash vanishing. Then, one to two months after the first stage, the patient goes missing. Missing is the official term. It is said the patient actually vanishes, leaving only a black soot-like mark. The above mentioned is the original manner of sleep urban legend, but the popular legend is more story-like and includes the following elements. Strong feelings for the dead summon the first nightmare. Once you follow the deceased into the dream, you can no longer return. If the sleeping person dreams of a lover or a friend, it will, be, it will beckon that person into sleep. The manner of sleep disease spreads thusly. Deep in the manner of sleep is the world of the dead, and if you make it, you can meet the deceased there. If you pursue the dead, you will not be able to return. Even if I knew that, I... There's an unaddressed envelope in the desk. It seems as though there's a cassette tape inside. Perhaps it was sent to K. That's an old looking tape and be surprised if it works. The notebook was in the envelope. 
This song is thought to be the original northeastern Japan's lullaby, The Sleeping Priestess. It is found in a gramophone at a local university, and I had it sent to me. I listened listen to it, but the first and second verses are slightly different from today's The Sleeping Priestess. This is thought to be due to differences in the period and area where the song was transmitted. Further, a major difference is that there is also a, quote, third verse. I have to look into it more, but it seems that the mood changes from the first two verses to the third. I wrote the lyrics as I heard them. Go to the other side, cast the boat, take a ride. Cross the rift to the other side, further and further to the other side. It must sail bearing your tattoos and offer an hour offering of tears. The first and second verses are littered with frightening words, but the third verse is more melancholy. In particular, the ending of the song seems less like a lullaby than something sung at a funeral. Add it to the file. So many files. Oh boy. Yeah, this is definitely going to, this is definitely taking more of a turn than I thought it was going to. I still think it is better because, you know, Miku is still here. Just not here, you know? I might still be able to play her every now and then, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old tape, sleeping breezes. And I am so glad that they actually provided a translation because I could barely hear what the lyrics were in the first place. Alright. See what Kay has to say. So glad that I wrote down the lyrics. Also because I don't know if I could understand that in the first place even if it was in the native Japanese. Yeah, I'm sorry. You handed over the cassette tape to Kay. This could be a clue. I'll examine it tonight. Alright. I have a stupid idea. We are saving this kind of as a, um... We'll call it... Yannin? Last Passage. Well, that's ominous. Give me a hot tick. Ah, Go back too far and you can't seem to go back in. Gotta go back. I gotta stop this. 
Okay. So yeah, going through this door was definitely a sort of a bit of a time the you know what I mean. One second, let me see if I can't go back further. Gotta go back, go back and forget. Okay. And the ultimate test. Yes, I did actually have to reload from like the night prior before seeing that she was all right and whatnot. Well, let's see how this goes. If you follow the dead in your dreams, you won't be able to come back. A few you, I. So it seems like it definitely has effect on gameplay. Maybe not necessarily gameplay, but you know, you know what I mean. So I think for that, I'm going to keep this saved here as well, just so as I can have like a, you know, it seems like a very bad end sort of situation as much as I I like Miku because she is a fantastic character in this and you know playing her is fun but I'm kind of curious as to because again I, I know that there are two ends so uh, I, I guess it's just a matter of whether or not I want to put in the extra effort to see the second ending but in any case I'm gonna go ahead and call an episode here when we return um, we're back in the dream, and we still have some terrible realizations, like having to stake her and put her out of her misery or some such like that. Thank you, everyone, so very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying my tournament as much as I'm enjoying playing the game. And as always, I hope to see you guys in the next video.
Take care. Cheers.